Good morning. You and I are going for a little ride. You're okay, I'm gonna let you out here. There's some woods and a creek, so you should be all right. Okay? Well, good morning, or it's almost afternoon. It is um, Thursday, August 4th, and I have gotten my example ready for my class that I'm taking for programming about what I'm gonna use the, or possibly use the programming skills that I've been looking at for my classes. Uh, we're looking like we're going to get a little bit of rain this morning, which will be great. We can always use a little bit more rain since we were so behind for the last couple of months. Um, I went ahead and picked out the letters that were too close, but I also took out this side of the knot work. I'm going to move it over a couple of stitches and come up so that this looks more balanced left to right. So I think once I do that, I'll have about two stitches all the way around and I think when I move the letters it'll even out this outside border some so um, yeah so you know that's kind of a bummer that I had to pull all that out but at the end of the day I want it to look right so yeah so I'm gonna get ready for my class and I'll check back in with you guys in a little while well my class is over um, I talked about how I was gonna use the concepts that I saw maybe in my modern physics class. That class has both the calculus-based students in it and the algebra-based students. So you have to kind of, you know, be able to tailor things to accommodate their level of understanding. Um, I got a sad email. Um, I used to foster dogs, uh, quite a few actually, back in the day. From about 2013 till about 2016. Wow. I fostered almost 400 dogs. A lot of them were litters of puppies, but a um, very special litter of puppies was from Miss Betsy, had a dog named Susie. Teddy, barking at the cats, um, that came to live with her after the Adkins tornado. She just wandered up after the Adkins tornado. And Susie, unfortunately, was not fixed and had a litter of puppies. So I was able to uh, help rehome those puppies and that litter of puppies has always had a special place in my heart because it made me several friends on uh, Facebook who are, uh, you know, like-minded people, which was nice. Um, they lived all throughout the Northeast. Some were in Massachusetts, some were in New Hampshire, some were in Vermont. Um, but they all uh, have, they would be, that would be, let's see, I guess it was about 10 years ago. So they would be 10 years old this year. And unfortunately, one of the owners who I'm friends with messaged me and said that Bentley had, had passed. Uh, Bentley had cancer. They did not know until the very last second. He got to feeling kind of bad and couldn't, one day he couldn't get up. So they took him to the vet and found out that he was in end stage cancer. So, um, he had a very good life. Teddy, he had a very good life up until the very end. Megan loved him a great deal. So, you know, it's, it's sad because they live such short lives, but their lives are so rich and big and full for us. So, anyway, um, I wanted to share that because Bentley will always have a special place in my heart, as will Anna and Charlie and all the other ones in that litter always were kind of special to me. So um, anyway, I talked to my com um, comrade. <laughs> I talked to my colleague. He's not my comrade. <laughs> Regardless of what they say about us, commie liberal professors. Um, I talked to my colleague about these peppers that I had talked about yesterday. Uh, Jeff Padberg, who's one of the biology professors, gave me this plant, and so I asked him, I said, what are these? And these are red bikino, bikino peppers. I'm probably not saying that correctly. They are Brazilian pepper. Um, they are part of, they are actually classified as capsaicum chinesis, and they are what's used in pepper sauce. The name bikino literally means little beak, so it looks like a bird's head, which it kind of does. Um, they're small teardrop shaped pods averaging three centimeters in length and have a curved center that tapers into an elongated pointed tip. Uh, skin ripens from pale green to bright red and they're glossy and smooth. 
my plant is extremely prolific, so I'm very happy about that. Um, red Bikino chilies have a milder heat, have a mild heat ranging from 500 to 1,000 Scovilles, and they have a fruity flavor reminiscent of habaneros without the intense heat, so they're a little bit more flavorful. Um, yeah, so of course it has capsaicin in it because it's a hot pepper, which shouldn't surprise any of us. Um, in Brazil, they are used as, um, they're sort of that, <laughs> when you see the pickled vegetables in, in restaurants and in bars and stuff, these are a staple of those. They are native to South America, initially documented in Brazil, and were believed to first have been cultivated in the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais, Gerais, uh, Gerais, Minas Gerais. Today, red Bequino chili peppers can be found as ornamental commercial plant, ornamental plants in home gardens and are grown on a small scale um, on local farms through Brazil, Peru, and the United States. And they're commonly used in pickling. And uh, so, anyway, I wanted to let y'all know I found out what those were. <laughs> well, one of the things I did during my class today is I took advantage of uh listening to other people talk about their projects to straighten up my alignment issues on my runes tree here. So um, what I had done is, if you remember, I had pulled out this entire, let me see if that applies better like that, yeah. I had pulled out this entire knot work section, and so I redid that and spaced it a little bit better, and then I had pulled out these runes, and I'm starting to put those back. Um, and then I think since I've fixed that, I think that I'll be able to go ahead and put the outside border on it. Uh, I went ahead and went on up and connected the top of the tree just to make sure I didn't have any more alignment issues, but I'm much happier with how this is looking now. So, um, yeah, so hopefully I can get those letters put back in tonight and then I'll start filling in the tree. Yay. Okay, so I thought I'd end tonight with my card uh, readings for tonight. So the Believe in Your Own Magic deck, I'll show you all the cover one more time. Uh, tonight's card is the mirror, and it's treat your body like the palace that it is. Okay, so a little body positivity here, so that's good. Especially I like that it's a plus size woman, considering I'm also a plus size woman. You've been feeling self-conscious as of late, but the answer isn't to change anything about yourself. It is to learn. The answer is to learn to love the bodies, body you've been given. Avoid those crash diets, that extreme exercise, or any other unhealthy behavior. Take strides toward a healthy mindset that accepts you as you are, not what you feel pressured to be. And as a woman of a certain size, and as a woman of a certain age, I fully understand that. Um, but for some reason, I am doing better in that area. You know, I have worked on that and I have, I embrace who I am. I mean, yeah, certainly there are things that I'd like to, little things that I'd like to fix. Like I'd like to get my white shampoo back out and get the yellowing out of my hair, or I need to go get my nails done, but I just haven't taken the time this summer. But in general, my body is my body. It's gotten me this far and it's never let me down. So... You know, yes, we have our moments. We have ulcers or we get sick or we, you know, we struggle with high blood pressure or whatever. But, you know, my body is my body and it's carried me this long and it will carry me for the rest of my life. So I need to start treating it like the palace that it is. So there's that one. Okay. Then um, the Power of Flowers deck tonight, the card here is Black Cohosh. Okay. So, cohosh is an Indian word for rough and black, referring to the plant's gnarled and knotty roots, which extend deep into the ground. In contrast, its white flowers spike upward toward the light. Black cohosh is a summer plant found in shady woods as well as on their periphery, and I actually grow black and blue cohosh in my woodland garden. Um, this plant has powerful healing properties symbolized by its pure white flowers, which embody the power of transformation as they blossom out of dark and tangled roots under the crust of the earth. Black cohosh is considered a woman's plant for its estrogen-like qualities, which soothe menstrual cramps and assist in childbirth. 
Black Cohosh Elixir fosters transformation and helps one find inner resources such as courage and strength for overcoming addictive patterns and emotional dependencies which can undermine self-confidence. True liberation may follow as the soul gives rise to the luminous purity of essential, the essential divine self reborn. The archetype pictured is Kali, the goddess of destruction. Kali, also known as Shakti or Kali Ma, uh, is, she is the embodiment of pure female energy. I don't know that she is, I don't know that she and Shakti are the same. I think that's wrong. I'll have to look that up. Uh, she is the embodiment of pure female energy for she is the deepest void or womb where all is born and must die and be born again. Most commonly depicted as a black warrior goddess with striking features, Kali is a fierce protector of the universe. Her task is to strip away and devour all obstructions and hindrances. Hence, she is typically associated with the energy of transmutation, including swords, snakes, and skulls. In contrast to this fearful imagery, two of her arms reach out to bless and acknowledge her many fervent devotees, as well as to renew the seed of possibility, possible enlightenment for humanity. Kali stands victorious amid, amid the rooted entanglements of despair. White flowers blossom around her, symbolizing the peace and tranquility that inevitably arise after her raging storm. A rainbow encircles Kali's sword while, while her arms offer a kind blessing. Remember, out of your deepest, darkest fears, a new cycle of evolution beckons. Your path to enlightenment is secure. Mother Kali protects you along the way. And the little blessing says... Black cohosh with gnarly roots, offering flowers of tender white shoots. Kali Ma re reveals her sword, breaking the ties, cutting the cords. All my demons are eternally free. Black cohosh, you transform me. Okay. So, um, I think that's where I'm going to end it for tonight. Um, I'm going to work on my cross stitch some more. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much going to be my night. Not very exciting. But I'm going to work on my cross stitch some more. And... Then tomorrow, I need to get out and mow. <laughs> so, I think, oh, here comes Baxter. You gonna knock the phone off? Or are you just, okay. Okay, hello. Okay, so Baxter came to say hello. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.